I have a young legend, and it's so much fun to have him on here, Neil Patel. He's the co-founder of Neil Patel Digital. Of course, he's a New York Times bestselling author. He's an extraordinary entrepreneur, and I can tell you, I consider him a friend. Uh, the only negative, Neil, about this podcast is you're making me feel old. I've known you for over a decade. You're in your 20s, I think, even uh, when we first met years ago. And boy, have you come a long way. And so has the internet. And so have you. You you <laughs> were doing really well back when we first met. And of course, you're doing even better now. So congrats to your success as well. well let's talk about that. You know, everything evolves. And I think having the right mindset is critical. And one of the things that attracted me to you when you were so young is you had this terrific mindset. You were looking for an evolutionary, not a revolutionary solution of how to help people market. Uh, and if anyone knows the marketing trends and different tools that exist from historically almost the uh, inception of e-commerce and in utilizing the internet as we do today and social media, especially, uh, you know, looking at those marketing trends, what are some of the lessons you've learned to look for in marketing trends? Yeah, the, the, the big one that I've seen over the years is how can you adapt with people based on the channels that they're using? So when I first started out as a marketer, laptops weren't as popular. Everyone had desktop machines and you had market for them. These days, everyone has one of these. All right. And now you have to market to people based on their phones. So you got to adjust. And, you know, when I first started out, people were on Google. Now they're on Google, YouTube. Um, you know, there's no more MySpace, but then there's Facebook, there's Instagram, there's TikTok, there's LinkedIn. There's a ton of platforms. And what you have to do is you have to adapt to those platforms. So for example, let's say I was a local business in, I don't know, um, Irvine, California. You know, I would do the traditional marketing, like your SEO. I would do your social media marketing, but I would also adapt to the channels that people are on. So let's say I'm a dentistry in Irvine, California. I may use tools like Podium to communicate with people when they're on my uh, website, on the phone, or if they're existing customers, use text messages to follow up and get the ratings and reviews, which are really important now, but 10, 12 years ago, they weren't as important. So, uh, and creating an easy experience where someone can pay with just a clicks of a few button versus having to bust out their wallet and manually type in everything, right? It's just, how can you use the tools and the technology to make life more convenient, as well as adapt with people based on the platforms that they're on and the devices that they're using. And looking at these trends, which are ever-changing and accelerating, uh, these tools, and you quickly mentioned one of them, you know, Podium. Uh, you have your podcast, The Marketing School, and I've heard you mention Podium before. What specifically does Podium do? Podium makes it really easy to attract and retain your customers. If I had to put it in a dead simple way, that's how I describe it. You can get started for free, so there really is no commitment. And you can do everything from accept money, uh, communicate with your customers, get them to leave reviews. In essence, it's an all-in-one tool that helps you get more business, especially if you have multiple locations or just even one location. It works really well for SMBs. And with the SMB side of things, change is the only consistent certainty that you have. And change, not just because of the pandemic, is accelerating for everyone, especially the small business owner. Um, and what specific things does Podium do uh, or any other tools or trends that are going to help us adjust and adapt to the ever-changing, accelerating platform and perspective of a small business owner? Sure. So they're adapting based on what people are using, right? So, you know, in essence, Podium will adapt based on how people are paying to accept payments. Uh, Podium adapted so you can start chatting with your customers via text or on the website, um, and you can actually book appointments from it. Um, they adapted for reviews to help you get more reviews, but then now there's multiple sites that you can get reviews from, right? So they continue they're adapting their feature set to adjust with the channels and the platforms that people are using. And, you know, you've been involved in SEO since 
I didn't even know what SEO meant. It was like a foreign language to me years and years ago. And I know today it's fun because although I'm kind of the middle-aged mutant turtle of the internet, the you know popular middle-aged guy on Instagram, uh, but even more interesting, SEO, when I speak of it, is still a foreign language to people. And yet it is crucial because as there's so much noise and there's a, you know, micro communities being created. And ironically, when I think of Neil Patel and I think of SEO, I think of a thousand ambassadors. And one of the conversations we had over a decade ago was the idea of having a thousand ambassadors. And you were trying to educate and re-engineer my traditional marketing. I was running the most notable sports agency in the world at the time, Lee Steinberg. You were trying to re-engineer my perspective of how I can utilize the spectrumization, the segregation of an audience, this micro community. Um, for those of you or those out there that are like I was and, and probably still am in the foreign language stage of SEO, you know, what suggestions do you have today with the multi platforms that you described uh, to utilize um, that SEO type of, of segregation, democratization, community building? The big thing is with SEO, right? Getting traffic from Google or Yahoo or Bing. The big thing with SEO these days is how can you repurpose content? So let's say you create content for Google. Why can't you take that content, repurpose it and put it on Facebook and then put it on Instagram and then put it on TikTok and then put it on LinkedIn? So that's a big component because if you're already creating the content, you don't get penalized for reusing the content. You know, you're a prime example of this. You create content on tons of platforms and a lot of the content that you create is the same content that shows up on Instagram may show up on your Facebook. And there's nothing wrong with that because a lot of the people that see it on your Instagram will not see it on Facebook, right? They're different people. Like my mom uses Facebook, but she doesn't use Instagram. And you can get, you know, on both sides, the opposite, right? There's a lot of people that use Instagram that don't use Facebook or TikTok. And there is some small overlap, but the way these algorithms work is even if you have tons of followers, not everyone will see it. And when it comes to SEO, if you're going to create the content, repurpose it. Or if you're going to create a podcast like this, repurpose it into text, transcribe it, put it up as a blog post. And this is a video. So then you can take the video and put it on YouTube and uh, also put it on IGTV and then Facebook. Uh, you can also go live on these platforms. So it's just repurposing content is one of the biggest things because it constantly drives traffic. And what people forget about SEO is a large factor in the algorithm is brands. So brands are less likely to create fake news. They prefer to rank brands over non-brands because people trust them. So if you can go and you can put your content everywhere, people see you more. It's called the rule of seven in marketing. When someone interacts with your brand or sees it seven times, they're much more likely to evangelize. You're much more likely to build a brand. And that also helps you rank higher on Google. Yeah, I love to be seen everywhere. And two lessons that I've learned you know, from you, watching you, knowing you, is that I call them the Shakespearean lessons. And, and the first uh, is to thine own self be true. Uh, even early on, you know, people would laugh at us, scoff at us, make fun of us and mock us. Uh, and then ironically, they applaud uh, again. But how important is it today with utilizing Podium and SEO and all these different things to know your own frequency, to thine own self be true, to, you know, it's overused, it's not organic and authentic, it's literally knowing your brand and staying true to your frequency, to thine own self be true. How important is that uh, today and why? Very important, because I think people see through the crap these days, right? Um, a great example of this is Comcast. Back in the day, Comcast was known for having some of the worst support ever. I don't know if that's still true, but I remember went viral on the internet on how a Comcast technician was waiting on hold to talk to Comcast headquarters and he fell asleep on someone's couch. That's how long he was on hold for. And the overall point I'm making is you got to be true to yourself, whether it's your frequency and how much you want to push out content or your messaging or what you're trying to do with your business, your products. You have to be true to yourself. And what's really important here is if you're not true to yourself, people see through it. You're not going to grow your business and you're just not going to do as well. But on the flip side, if you're true to yourself and people give you feedback, you really care for your customers, you try to improve, you're going to win because you're going to be happier and your business is going to grow because you're providing a better service, better product, because if you enjoy what you're doing, you're going to do a better job at it and people are going to have a better experience. And then the second Shakespearean lesson 
is uh, the stage theory. Uh, Shakespeare said, the whole world is our stage. And I remember conversations we had, like I said, over a decade ago, you were trying to explain to me the size, scope and scale of this audience and that the whole world is I was in the traditional marketing of, you know, the unbelievable baseball, football, boxers of the world, the biggest names in sports and entertainment. You were trying to suggest to me that although radio, print and TV are important and billboards are important, that there was a whole nother concept, which you podium and many other you know companies that you work with are really taking advantage of. And that's David, let's capture this. And I remember we had video there for the, the, the first time up at the Luxor. And then let me teach you how to modify. And then there's this whole idea, which I had no idea about, about Amplify, which we talked about already, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, amplifying the correct modified content. And even like you said, you could turn podcasts into blogs and, and LinkedIn and, and put things into formats where people are accustomed to doing that. But there was one thing that we didn't think about back then that you have done such an extraordinary job. And I know Podium as well helps those small business owners with, and that's perpetual, is that you know we had no idea that content, as you said, the rule of seven in marketing uh, is aggregated in, in its own nature, that it, it's perpetual. Therefore, as someone gets exposed to or raises an awareness of your dental business in Irvine, that the more perpetual content that's out there, the more that you can have a reinforcement, an exponential awareness that occurs by having content that's captured correctly, modified, amplified, but most importantly, perpetuated. How has this stage theory been utilized and how do you utilize it with Podium as well, but how do you utilize that today, this stage theory? Yeah, sure. So, you know, the world is your oyster and what I love doing is you need to be consistent with your content creation and you need to keep pushing it out there and communicate with those people on a regular basis. So for example, let's say I was at local dentistry in Irvine, California. If I'm talking about teeth whining solutions, the next day I'm talking about straining your teeth. The next day I'm talking about, um, you know, how to prevent cavities. I'm continually releasing that content online, whether it's for on my own site or Google or the social web. And then I'm pushing out to my customers. So let's say you have all these customer records in your podium account, you want to continually communicate with them with all this updated information, whether they are not a customer or they are a customer, because the ones who aren't, they'll be more comfortable with your brand and eventually they'll convert. The ones that are, it'll keep you top of mind. It'll cause more word of mouth marketing, more referrals, and even repeat business where people keep coming back and buying from you again. But the key is you can't stop, right? There's all these platforms and ways you can reach people, but the moment you stop creating new content is the moment you start dying, believe it or not, right? Because there's going to be someone else who's just going to take your spot. Yeah, and that's the most difficult thing because there's a conflictual uh, relationship between I'm too embarrassed, I think I'm posting too much content, uh, especially with small business owners that may not be used to being in the limelight or putting their brand or, or their business in a limelight that they feel embarrassed that their family and friends are going to think that they're overdoing it. I remember when I first started to build my digital brand uh, with Gary Vaynerchuk because I was helping him with the sports agency, you know, he would give me five minutes a week uh, to look at my Instagram. And every time he looked at it, he would tell me one thing, post more, great stuff, post more. Great stuff, post more. And I, I was like, dude, my, my family's going to be annoyed, you know, because that's pretty much at the time when I started, only family and friends were really following me anyway. And he goes, David, until your family and friends are annoyed, you haven't even hit the minimum amount of content that you should be creating. You need to be consistent and persistent in that posting. You have to do it every single day. There is a zeroing effect. When you miss a day, it's X to the zero, which means you're starting all over at one. Uh, so make sure you, that you are consistent. Last thing, you've been and are a, a legend in this space because you've been doing it for so long at such a high level. You write books about it, New York Times bestselling author. You are a consultant around the world. I'm, I, I've been involved in projects with you and around you for so long. Everything you do is first class. I'm a lessons and story person. What to you is your favorite lesson today that you like to teach people uh, that you can share with us to help us all grow, expand, make money, help people and have fun. You know, my uncle once told me when I started out as an entrepreneur, 
I remember I lost one of my first big deals that I lost was a uh, million dollars. And it wasn't a million dollar contract. It was actually a million dollars of borrowed money that I put into a deal that just went away. And I remember one of my uncles told me when I was a little kid, you know, when things are going really well for you, keep in mind that other people have it better off than you in this world. There's someone out there who's doing way better than you. But when things are going really terrible for you, keep in mind, there's people who have it much worse than you in this world. There's people without food, clean water, without homes, right? And that helped me stay grounded. And he was saying, if you can stay grounded, you can keep pushing forward. Things will get better over time, but you need to be grounded. You can't be too excited when you close big deals. You can't get too upset when things go wrong. You need to be grounded, think straight with no emotions and just keep pushing forward. That's how you win. Yeah, and you keep winning. How old were you on that first deal where you lost that million dollars? 21-ish, somewhere around there. <laughs> As I always say, don't take for granted what other people are wishing for. My friend is radically humble in his successes. Neil Patel, thank you so much for joining me. This is David Meltzer with Entrepreneurs, The Playbook.